Hello. Exceptional rain last week in association with Storm Babette has brought some significant disruption with some places still recovering at the moment. And there's further wet weather to come as we go through this week. The jet stream is running to the south of the UK at the moment and it's a relatively active jet pushing various low pressure systems in from the Atlantic, which is why the weather is going to be fairly unsettled. Low pressure out towards the North Sea at the moment, but that is going to ease. But it's this low pressure towards the west of us as we go through towards the end of the week. It's going to become quite a mature low leading to some unsettled weather for many parts. But looking through the details for Thursday morning, some wet weather across southern parts first thing, heavy outbreaks of rain perhaps towards the east, and there could be some mist and murk around first thing as well. Otherwise, it's a day of some sunny spells, but also some hefty showers, particularly for western parts. Those showers could be heavy and thundery. Across eastern parts of Scotland, where we saw the exceptional rain last week, we are going to see some further rain coming in, and that could cause some further problems, although the rain won't be as heavy as what we saw last week. Temperatures looking at highs around 16, possibly 17 Celsius in the south, so around or a touch above average for the time of year. Continuing with the showery theme as we go through the end of the day, so watch out for some heavy downpours, still most likely to see those showers towards western parts, but also around eastern coastal areas likely to have some outbreaks of rain, and again here we have seen some flooding through recent days, so do watch out for some further issues. Mist and murk then becoming a again, a bit of an issue as we go through Thursday night into Friday. Looking at the bigger picture for Friday, and it's this mature low that I mentioned earlier that is going to dominate the picture. And it's around this that we're getting a returning polar maritime air mass. And so it is quite a, a chilly air mass, but it's also a relatively clean one. As a result, we're going to bring in some showers across at least the southwestern th half of the UK. A different story across more northeastern parts of the UK where we have an easterly flow. And it's on that easterly flow where we're going to continue to drag in some clouds, some murky conditions and further rain across eastern parts of Scotland. That's why we have a warning out all the way from at the time of recording valid from midday on Thursday until midday Saturday because we could see some totals building up over eastern parts of Scotland which could cause some further disruption here. Also some further rain across northeastern parts of England, quite a cloudy murky picture here. But like I said, elsewhere across many parts of the UK in that clean returning polar maritime air mass, yes, there'll be some decent sunny spells, but similar to Thursday, a scattering of showers and some of these could still be heavy. They will have some thunder mixed in and we could see some hail as well. The temperatures may be down a couple of degrees, but still near normal or a touch above for the time of year. A quick look towards Saturday then, and it's another unsettled picture. We're still going to be under the influence of that mature low out towards the west, and so it is going to stay blustery, windy at times, and there will be further outbreaks of showery rain across the bulk of the UK, particularly across eastern parts of Scotland. Again, here we could see some high rainfall totals continuing to build up. Temperatures similar, perhaps a touch down compared to Thursday and Friday. But let's take a look at some rainfall totals that we can expect, and here we have the output for 48 hourly total rainfall accumulations uh, as we go through midday Thursday to midday Saturday comparing different models. So on the left hand side we have the Met Office model, in the middle it's the European ECMWF and on the right it's the American GFS model. Now as you can see there's fairly good agreement between the models. Worth noting GFS it doesn't have the same resolution when it comes to the land so not quite capturing the highest totals over eastern parts of Scotland but it is highlighting we could possibly see close to 100 millimetres of rain over a few days, which nowhere near the exceptional rain that we saw last week with Storm Babette, but coming into places where we're still recovering from that exceptional rain, it could make issues for uh, a little bit worse. Also some heavy rain affecting parts of Wales and the south coast of England as well. So lots of places likely to see some significant rain as we go through the next few days. But worth bearing in mind, there is a bit of uncertainty. These plots here show uh, various model runs from both the Met Office on the top row and the ECMWF, the European model on the bottom row, showing the position of that mature low that I mentioned earlier that's likely to be in the West. There's relatively good agreement in older runs, which you see on the right hand side, there's a bit more spread, but as we've gone nearer the time and uh, more recent runs, runs earlier on today, 
it's there's fairly good agreement we are likely to see an area of low pressure towards the west of the uk just exactly where it's going to be just to highlight this area here that's the uk in case you can't quite see it uh, on your output but there's, there's some spread but it's not a huge amount of spread but it's that spread that does lead to some uncertainty in the details in the forecast and it's the details at the moment particularly because of where there is flood water already on, ongoing where we see the heaviest rain really does play a significant part as to where we're going to see some further impacts and the detail isn't quite there just yet but we're confident we are going to see an unsettled picture. More unsettled weather continuing as we go through the end of the weekend this system tracks its way northeastwards Sunday into Monday but then it does clear away and what that will then allow is we're likely to see something a little bit colder making its way down from the north. So some colder air pushing its way southwards. A bit of uncertainty now as to how far south this colder air is going to make its way. Some models don't really want it to push across even many parts of Scotland, but other models want to take it a little bit further southwards. The Met Office model, which is the one I have here, shows that the boundary is somewhere around the middle part of the UK. So something a little bit colder spreading across northern parts as we go into the start of next week, but holding on to something a bit milder towards more southern areas. As well as the change to something a little bit colder early next week. The various systems that we have coming through this weekend could also bring some significant rain. The rainfall totals for many don't look quite as high as what I'm expecting during the first part of the week, but nonetheless, there are some significant rainfall totals. Again, I have the Met Office model on the left, European in the middle, and American on the right-hand side. And what you can see, GFS is quite different and has some ex um, pretty high rainfall totals across western parts of Wales and southwest England, whereas the Met Office model has a bit more towards the south southeast, and the European um, model has has it in lots of coastal places. So there's quite a spread as to where we're going to see the heaviest rainfall as we go through Saturday into Monday. Sh sorry, I should have mentioned this is the 48-hour rainfall totals from midday Saturday until midday Monday. Now, as we look further ahead, and as I mentioned, we are going to see a bit of colder air coming in, at least across northern parts. So here I have your ECMWF metergram plots, which show your temperatures, both your maximums, the reds, and your minimum temperatures for Edinburgh in the top and Reading in the bottom. And they show the forecast maximum temperatures and minimum temperatures compared to average, which is the shaded area. And what we can see if we start off looking at Edinburgh, as as we go through the next few days, they're near normal for the time of year, but like I mentioned before, colder air plunging down as we go through Sunday, later Sunday, more so into Monday. And so that's where you see a real drop in the temperatures as we go through the start of next week. Those temperatures then do start to pick up a little bit, so closer to average through the latter part of next week. But the other thing to draw attention to is the fact that we're unlikely to see that colder air making its way across more southern parts. So you can see in the plot for Reading, temperatures generally stay near normal. They do dip down a little bit below average as we go to, through next week, but not on the same scale as uh, for Edinburgh. Then this is a popular chart, and so I thought I'd share it because it just gives us a fairly good trend for what could happen as we go through the rest of next week. And in case you've not seen it before, it's the probabilistic pressure trend. So the probability of seeing a certain type of pressure. Blue shows that low pressure, unsettled weather is more likely. And in case you can't read the numbers, unsurprisingly, we have 100% confidence for the next few days. And in fact, as we go through the weekend and even into the beginning of next week, we have very high confidence that we are likely to see low pressure generally in control. And even, well, through much of next week and beyond. It is autumn, so it's not unusual for us to have low pressure largely in control, but that is a pretty unsettled picture that that paints, hopefully not as unsettled as we have seen recently. Now looking at a bit more detail then, so yes, next week does look like it is going to be unsettled. We have that dip of colder air coming in Monday, possibly Tuesday, how far south that gets, a little bit of uncertainty, but it could be a bit quieter for a time. However, then we are likely to see more low pressure coming in from the west sometime around the middle part of next week. A bit of uncertainty as to how deep that low pressure is going to be and as to exactly where it's going to be. Obviously, we're looking a week ahead, so no surprise that the confidence isn't quite as high. But here we have the model output, the most likely regime for next Wednesday, so Wednesday the 1st of November, coming from ECMWF. 
I say it's the most likely. There are 52 members in the ECMWF model and only around a quarter of them were suggesting that this is the pattern. It's quite a deep low. This could bring some pretty wet and windy weather as we go through the middle part of next week. But you can see it's a little bit out towards the west of the UK. If we look at the second most likely, now this only had around a fifth of the uh, members from ECMWF, so only slightly less likely than the one that I showed you just now. You can see it brings the low a little bit quicker in, a bit more across, but it's also not as deep. It's not going to be as intense. And so whilst we are likely to see a change to a bit more unsettled, a bit wetter, windier after a, perhaps a slightly drier start to next week, there is some uncertainty as to the timing and how intense that wet weather is going to be. But if I show you the similar chart, but this time for Friday, and it goes with the idea that that low pressure will track across the UK. So we have fairly high confidence on that happening. And you can see it then pushes it towards the east. And a couple of things I want to mention about this. Starting off, there's higher confidence on this being the picture for next Friday compared to the charts that I just showed you for Wednesday. Close to half of the ECMWF members suggested that this would be the forecast for next Friday. So as a result, confidence is that little bit higher. But the other thing that we have to bear in mind, if this does come off and if we play around and tweak a little bit the positioning of the low, it's not out of the question that we get high pressure, a blocking high towards Scandinavia. And that could delay, postpone and stall the progress of this low pressure moving its way across the UK. Why does that matter? Well, that's what we had with Storm Babette. I'm not suggesting that it's likely that it's going to be anywhere near as extreme or the rainfall intense and as heavy as what we saw with Storm Babette, but we just need to bear in mind that there is the potential that as we turn again more unsettled, see another low pressure system come through as we go through next week, it could get stuck and stall a little bit and end up with rain continuing to come in and it could come over the north of it and to the eastern parts of Scotland again in similar areas where we saw that exceptional rainfall last week. So it's just worth bearing that in mind. It's not the most likely outcome, but we are likely to see some unsettled weather, but hopefully it will move through a little bit quicker and not get stuck by a blocking high. Then the last chart that I wanted to show you about the UK is the confidence chart, and usually confidence drops as you go further into the future. And what you can see, this is confidence compared to average. So the greens show that at the moment for the next couple of days. For the general picture, confidence is pretty high. Like I mentioned, the devil's in the detail, particularly when it comes to the heavy rain and the risk of flooding through the next few days. So we'll keep an eye on that. But for the general unsettled picture through the next few days, confidence is quite high. Then the confidence really drops as we go into the middle part of, or early middle part of next week. I mentioned it's pretty uncertain how far that cooler, colder air is going to make its way southwards and whether or not it's going to be particularly settled or not during the first part of the week. But then confidence picks up again as we go towards the end of next week. It, likely, it is likely to be an unsettled picture, but we have greater confidence in the detail for that. So I wanted to share that with you. Now, the last thing that I want to mention today is, uh, well, usually our 10-day trends take a look mostly at the UK, but I thought it would be amiss not to mention Hurricane Otis, which has intensified rapidly through uh, late Tuesday into Wednesday. And in fact, in just 12 hours, it went from just being a tropical storm to being a Category 5 hurricane. So it really has intensified. Intensification isn't that unusual. It's fairly common during El Nino, but it's a little bit more unusual for it to intensify so close to land. And in fact, I believe it's the first Category 5 hurricane or first hurricane to still be Category 5 status when it's made landfall in the Eastern Pacific on record. It's caused a lot of devastation, a lot of destruction already in parts of Mexico, particularly Acapulco. So it is causing a lot of problems. So I just wanted to highlight that then. Like I said, uh, we had, do have a lot of unsettled weather to come, so we may need to issue warnings as we get nearer the time. So do keep up to date with the forecast wherever you are. Bye-bye.